I think I heard uh, when they made Journey, uh, uh-huh. they had lots of iterations on the communication between the players uh-huh. just to be sure that the players cannot use this to actually trick the players and like be annoying and like be, you know, uh, they wanted for this communication to be positive and one player helping another go through the, mm-hmm. the journey. So I was wondering, like, do you have any expectations how much of the players, how many of the players will be the cooperative ones? How many will be the... Uh, will be the helpful ones and how many will be like the power hungry mad people and do you have any strategies to like skew the game into one direction if it's too big of a of a let's say power hungry mob i think that it's uh, it's not something we have clear predictions of uh, right now um, we are aware of both and we're making sure that both player types should be able to have a good time um, in the game um, but since we're aware of both, we also have like a full list of like, yeah, these are the features we'd like to, like that could help us in certain situations, right? So like we don't necessarily need PvP for a world to feel alive, but if we don't have PvP, we also like removing a big aspect of like the type of interactions players can have with each other, right? But you could consider things like having unique areas within the game where there's PvP, like you need to, move across this border, not until then is there PvP um, is some options we have. So like you can kind of like exist around that more in safety and you can go in there to maybe get unique uh, resources you can get elsewhere. Other options are also um, kind of like since we're looking at a game with horizontal progression, players will exist in different parts of the games for what their own reason um, which is something we're working on, but that means that we can choose to have biomes, we choose to have slip worlds, which I guess I did mention that. So the slip worlds were intended for them to have like one biome. So you would have like the forest slip world, the desert slip world, the frozen tundra, the jungle, the swamp, the uh, meteorite belt you used to fly around or whatever. Like right now we're going with a lot of, uh, I would say more classic, but with the alien twist and then moving to the more craziness later on. Um, just because there's something very nice about exploring a more, you know, a homely place, um, even if it does have uh, scary creatures or players in it. So I think with the, the different slip worlds, we can also choose to do, well, this slip world only has 12 players instead of 24. This slip world maybe doesn't have PvP at all. Like we can almost treat them as game modes in a sense. And then the type of content that you can find on there is something you can control. It's actually something we're working on kind of right now. Like we're working on like server scaling and matchmaking and world generation and picking between them. And that, it's a lot of things that needs to come together, right? But it's also quite exciting that now we've worked a lot of the backend tools and you can start thinking about like, yeah, well now we procedurally generate both deserts and forests and if we, I spend the time on just making one that's a bit smaller, I need to think about, well, okay, there needs to be fewer PUIs, there needs to be fewer creatures, like kind of like scaling down everything in to, to match your size. That's going to change the experience as well, right? You're going to have a bigger world with fewer players. That means probably less PvP to meet each other, but there's less of that just hunting each other. Okay.